One of the great watershed moments in the history of the development of law is the giving of the Ten Commandments. It's right up there with such events and other codes of law, such as the Hammurabi's Code out of Mesopotamia. But it stands out as different from these other codes of law in the first line of the Ten Commandments itself. I am the Lord your God. These are commands given to us by God himself on right living as his people. If we are to call ourselves the holy people of God, these are the standards that God himself has given us. And as anyone has ever studied the development of law, especially in Western civilizations, this is a watershed moment. We even have images of Moses as the great lawgiver in the Supreme Court building of the United States, and I believe a statue of him in the, li the Library of Congress, representing the field of the study of law. It is unfortunate, therefore, that we see factions within our society who push to remove the Ten Commandments from public buildings or political buildings because of its association with faith and religion. They forget it's an important part of the development of law. And so they want them to be removed from public places and even in courtrooms where judges are sued to have the Ten Commandments removed from their own courtroom because of the association of the Ten Commandments, not with law, but with faith. We also see various debates as to the numbering of the Ten Commandments between Catholics and some non-Catholic Protestant sects. I have a series on YouTube on the Ten Commandments, and every now and again I will get a comment from someone saying, we Catholics have numbered them the wrong way. Some even get melodramatic about it, and they say, Catholics lie. The Ten Commandments are numbered wrong. Well, okay, the melodrama is what it is. But we do see a difference in how the commandments are numbered. Even in how the Jewish people number them. For them, the first commandment are those first words, I am the Lord your God, period. That's the first commandment. But what we see between Catholics and Protestants really doesn't matter in terms of numbering because the commandments are the commandments, however they're numbered. But the difference we see is based upon the difference of how the commandments are presented in the book of Exodus and in the book of Deuteronomy, where it is presented a second time and is referred to as the Decalogue. One difference is, in the book of Exodus, we see the commandment of coveting covering everything, wife, goods, etc. In Deuteronomy, we see the separation of the commandment of coveting. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife. You shall not covet your neighbor's goods. We also see a combination of the first commandment. You shall not worship any false gods, no gods before me, and you shall not carve a graven image. Non-Catholic, most non-Catholics will separate that commandment where we in the Catholic Church combine it. So that for us, the fifth commandment is you shall not kill, whereas in other non-Catholic groups, the fifth commandment is honor your father and your mother. But the reason for that is because as Catholics, we take our numbering and our tradition of the Ten Commandments from the book of Deuteronomy, not from the book of Exodus as we read it today. But even beyond debates over how we number the commandments, we do see a conflict between the, the law that God has given us and the worldliness we are tempted to embrace that pulls us away from the law of God. We can think of perhaps others, you know, a number of, of commandments that in many ways are implied or unspoken, such as, you shall look as young as you can look for as long as you can if you hope to be successful. Thou shalt make a great deal of money if one is to have self-worth in this life. Thou shalt not use words that are considered offensive by a certain elite group if one does not wish to be canceled. We can think of other unnamed commandments, such as those that our secular world often pressures us into embracing. 
sometimes even to the point of silencing us as people of faith. But there are also worldly values that we see that directly counter the Ten Commandments themselves and sometimes could be constituted as an exception to all the commandments based on the standards of worldliness. Some of them perhaps can be humorous in terms of what they ask of us as people who live within the world, but some can, some can perhaps be a little unnerving and perhaps even shocking. But we do see them as part of the conflict between what we are called to be as followers of Christ and the people of God and what the world calls us to be to pull us away from that. You shall have no other God before me except the God of secular, progressive, atheistic, political correctness. You shall not make unto me a graven image and worship it. But we can make an image of God in our own imagination, reducing God to an imaginary friend and insisting on God behaving according to the way I think God's supposed to be. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, unless it's needed for emphasis when one is angry, making a point, or making a movie. You shall keep holy the Lord's day. Unless you have something more important to do, such as Little League or NFL, or unless you find yourself too busy to take a day of rest. Honor your father and your mother. Unless you are a teenager who wants an abortion, or unless the faith your father and mother tried to raise you in is too old-fashioned and you are far too above being involved in that stuff. You shall not kill. Unless the government says it's a woman's right, or unless medical experts have determined that one is too old or too sick to have a life that is considered quality. You shall not commit adultery. Unless God made you that way, you're doing it for love, and you're using the right protection. You shall not steal, unless you are taking from the industrious to provide for the lackadaisical. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, except for expedient exaggeration in the context of gossip, politics, or the press. You shall not covet your neighbor's spouse until he or she gets divorced. You shall not covet your neighbor's goods unless it's the latest technology or unless it's something your children want and you want to give it to them to show how much you love them. We can perhaps think of all kinds of ways in which the world pulls us away from the Ten Commandments with the principles that the world impose upon us in many, many different ways. But this year, we have, as a church, an example that we are celebrating of a giant of holiness who, by that example, we see a perfect fulfillment of the Ten Commandments. As a church this year, we are honoring Saint Joseph, and we are looking to him as that example of faith an example of true discipleship, example of true dedication to Christ, and an example of what it means to be a true person within the people of God. Joseph did not have any other gods before the Lord, nor did he bow down and worship graven images, even an image of his own imagination. He very easily could have rationalized or imagined God's pleasure in quietly divorcing the Blessed Mother when she was found with child. After all, this was allowed in the Law of Moses. But rather, Joseph recognized God's will and was obedient to God when the angel told him to not be afraid to take Mary into his home. Joseph showed that he was a man who kept the Sabbath holy, as he also was a man who obeyed the other precepts of the law of Moses, especially when he and Mary presented Jesus in the temple and redeemed their son, their firstborn, with two turtle doves according to the law. Joseph showed 
that he honored his father and mother in teaching Jesus, the Son of God, the way of the Jewish faith into which Jesus was born. Passing on that faith which Joseph's parents had given him onto the son of whom he had charge. And honor not only them, but the very family of David, the tribe of Judah, and the people of God into which he, Joseph, and Jesus had been born. In the face of danger, Joseph did not become a violent man but rather protected Jesus and Mary when they were faced with danger at the hands of Herod, fleeing into Egypt, and thus never moved in any way toward breaking the commandment, you shall not kill. Joseph was faithful to his wife, never desiring another, even to taking her into his home when she was found with child before they were married, showing obedience to the commandment, You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, and you shall not commit adultery. Joseph was a man of truth when he faithfully fulfilled his pledge as Mary's betrothed, taking her into his home, even when the law would have allowed for him to divorce her quietly. And in faithfully earning an honest living for himself and his family as a carpenter, rather than depending on the goodwill of others or seeking to advance himself further in his community, all the while teaching Jesus the honorable trade of the carpenter, Joseph kept the commandment, you shall not steal, you shall not covet your neighbor's goods. Let us see in Joseph a true example of faithfulness and fidelity in living the Ten Commandments. Let us see him as an example that counters the manner in which the world seeks to pull us away from a faithful living of those Ten Commandments. Let us be an example of teaching those commandments to our children and your grandchildren, and be a true witness in this world of what it means to be sons and daughters of the Most High. This is a watershed moment in the development of law and the progress of civilization. But as people of faith, we know that these are words we receive from God, and we are called to live them as witnesses to that great dignity we have as people made in God's image and likeness. And during the season of Lent, it is a time to really examine our lives, ponder these commandments, to turn away from what sin that pulls us away from these commandments, and return to the gospel that accentuates them. So let us recognize where the world seeks to pull us away so that we can step forward throughout this Lent and throughout the year as people living in the world who nonetheless stand out differently from the world because we hear God's word in the commandments he himself has given to us as his holy people.